somebody else starts piping in and basically just instructing the person that has the water, I will not even my hand on it. Okay, no, okay, let the person finish. Okay, they have to, you have to ask the other guy, and the only reason for that is they can fall in and the car. Okay, now I'm going to pick on Joe for a while. Okay, um, it, like I said, the first thing we'll right here. Um, I think it was Bob Rice came up after the last meeting and he, he wanted to talk. We were saying, and he said, No. And Joe, he said, Come over here, I'll talk to you. Can't do that. Why? Okay. Because any public uh, town business has to be discussed with the full board. Okay. You can't say that anybody else sitting next or even in the room or maybe in the wrong way. No. There's no, if the meeting is done, then there's no discussion on town business. Talk about 4-H or hockey or something. You can do that. Do that up there. Okay, but no meeting after the meeting. It causes nothing but trouble. And Jim will probably touch on that. Um, but don't the residents talk to us at any time? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. What's like, the difference? Like I like brought up that stop sign on. Day. Yeah. That's town business. About the yeah, like the stop sign on Stringer's Bridge. Like I, mm -hmm. people come up to me and they're like, no. "Hey, how you doing?" Hey, that's a pretty dangerous intersection. Mm -hmm. You know, that's town business. You know, I don't know how to. If people call, talk to you. If people call you directly, then you the next meeting say it right out on that item. And say you put that on the agenda. You can say, hey, I got a lot of calls. People are saying this and that. Okay, mm -hmm. but in any time there's any discussion over here, you know, after a meeting, it, it's town business. It has to be discussed from the full board. Okay, uh, it's a legal meeting otherwise. Period. It's just like why uh, if, if I send an email to all of you and all of a sudden you guys start responding, I usually say we do not respond. By doing that, you've now had a legal meeting because you, in effect, are acting as a board. Okay. So you have to be careful with that. And, Jim, and I think Jim's going to talk about that too. Because okay. if it's one on one, yeah, a forum, I understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah but one but on one. one, on one I think he's After saying meeting, in the building. He's saying in the saying building in when the it's building. adjourned. Because when it's, it's gotten adjourned, disorderly right? Disorderly, and that had to stop. Yeah. So plus we have, we still are doing business because I need all your signatures on stuff. Right, right. You know? right. And it and just goes so much smoother if I don't have to walk yeah. around people who are trying to. And some people can't sign while they're talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if, if that happens, just say you got a minute. You know, I'm just wrapping up here. You know, if you're able to stick around, I can talk to you out there. Yeah. Okay. okay. And it's okay. not like it's a no-no, but it's just, yeah, yeah right. it he, stuff. They're just saying when it adjourns here, just get the hell right. out of here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Why it's announced that if you're you're uh, able and allowed to witness us saying our chat, witness it. Okay. The meeting is done now. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, the other uh, item with the quorum, uh, I reviewed the tapes from the last meeting. Uh, no phones being on the phone or texting during the meeting, period. Okay. You must have been on texting at least half the meeting the first meeting. I don't know who you were texting. I didn't know who you were texting. But, no. Any no person phone. who needs their phone during a meeting and she, so, she checks the time for so, a minute. So what's the law on that? Because at these other meetings, I see them bringing in laptops as a point of reference. A lot of this is like me looking up things on the town website and yeah. looking up. Yeah. See, yeah. It, like, you did that like would, it, would it be better for rules. you guys if I bring in a laptop and then I look up some of this stuff? So like if I have the floor or something, like I need some point of reference too, I think. I mean, well, and keep in mind, electronics. I, I was actually viewing the town board meeting for the ATV portion for the ordinance I need to up um, amend. I haven't done it yet, but I <laughs> reviewed that portion of the meeting just to, you know, refresh myself. And I'll tell you, I had not watched a meeting online before. I was impressed by the quality, but it picks up everything. Oh, I mean, yeah. it was very apparent that I was chewing gum. That did not look very <laughs> professional, <laughs> you know? Uh, so they catch everything. And even at the end of the approval of the amendment, um, I knew you were excited about it. And you yeah. like, yeah. I'm like, 
you kind of have to refrain from doing yeah. that too, just because. That's sorry, I still got a lot of fun in me. I apologize. I was, I was this happy. Is yeah, I know, I'm sorry. I, I actually got a call about that from someone. Yeah. yeah. Tell Joe to calm down a little. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm like, well, he's excited, you know. Right. You got something. Yeah. And again, the whole idea. I mean, the Corbin is more than just words. Okay. Uh, we're all elected by our 4,000 people. We represent them, okay? We do our best job to represent them, okay? But we can't show up one group or the other. Correct. We are, we we debate, we discuss, we argue, and we vote. And what did I tell you at the first meeting? I said, if you're gonna worry about- You told me, good you. job, Ty. <laughs> <laughs> what, did say, what did I say before that? You said, if you're gonna worry about the vote, you can't, yes, you said, you got to make a decision. You got to vote the way your conscience tells you, and if it passes, it passes, and if it doesn't, it doesn't, and that's just the way it is. If you dwell on it, you're never going to sleep that night. That's it. That's true. Yeah. It is. You know. So. And you don't see, want to be counting votes with every vote. You don't want to be counting ballots with every vote. Yeah. 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 There was previous references. So circling back to the phone usage. Yeah. If I'm looking up something, how is that? Is that illegal or no, is there something it's that's not legal? illegal. Um, I would just say use it sparingly, turn the ringer off. Things might be a little different from you because you have a two year old at home. And I mean, certainly if a message pops up, um, actually, we had that with um, Bill, Bill last year or the year before, had a family emergency come up during the board meeting. You know, so phones aren't prohibited. Just keep the ringers off and use them sparingly. Right. Yeah. Right. Because it shows you when you're on yeah. video. And yeah, you're you can see yeah. Well, but on yeah. Joe's behalf, he's younger. I mean, these guys, they look, that's how they I, live I, their I, life. I, I mean, us, for, with us old people like don't get I through the day like that. And these young people seven, do. Seven days a week. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't understand what he's saying. I mean, if he is looking something. No, if you're sitting there doing yeah. this the whole time. Yeah. There have definitely been times where we've been talking about something I've looked up for right. the town ordinance or yep. to oh, I check the language. I, 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 I have a question going yeah. back to, I had this idea the other day because I watched the meeting as well to see how, how fumbled I look. Um, what, when, when someone has the floor, what if, <laughs> and this is just an idea from when I was a kid in school, what if we had like a flag or something that that person put in front of their and until that until they were done when they were done they handed it or put it down or actually that's my job to keep the order so if I give somebody the floor I can tell them you say okay that that's it okay and then you can look at Kim be quiet <laughs> yeah and the hard part for me is um, sitting over there. But where Barb is and you're shorter, I have a hard time seeing right. so I think Barb is doing this. Mm -hmm. Right, because I want, like where I'm sitting, I'm like, I have to sit back and then I'm raising my right. hand like yeah. this. And, and But I, I was going to, when we were talking about the setup here, I was going to be a little bit higher than no, then they'll start uh -huh. saying King Joe again. Yeah. You know, so what if you put you on the corner so you could see everyone? Yeah. Well, I sit at the corner over I, there. I, I always have, have to go the, like this and see. I, yeah. say, I can't but, see Joe right. or Bar really at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm well, you can see my fat. You can see my big <laughs> head. I just can't. It's tough for me to know. see. <laughs> I have this freaking watermelon yeah. that yeah. you can see that thing on the So you, you looked at Dave, and like Jim said, you, if you sneeze or. Oh, you, yeah. Oh, yeah. You clear your throat, it's, it's like, oh, no. yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, but again, the whole idea is just to maintain order. It's, it's so easy, and it seems that. For the last year, every meeting, somewhere along the line, you may be getting into that two hour, two and a half hour range, somebody starts talking, all of a sudden, everybody starts piping. Right? It's like, yeah. no. Yeah. And I said, That's what that gavel is for. Yeah, no, I have a gavel. <laughs> we bought you one. A year ago, almost every meeting was like three and a half plus <laughs> hours. I, would, I didn't think the first meeting know. was that bad, but I don't oh, know. I didn't. I didn't. No, so two and a half time wise, it wasn't that bad. We were flying through it, I thought. We've been like that. Yeah. For our first one. We'll get better, Joel. Just, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, don't, okay. whip us, don't whip us too much the first one. <laughs> so now, now it's Jim's turn if you're oh, I'm done. I'm that done. was the dry, boring stuff. <laughs> so, open meetings law. It applies to 
only to a body or group of people that's considered to be a governmental body, and that's defined in statute 19.82 sub 1. So I'm not going to go through and read statutes for you, but I did print them off and they're, um, they're in your materials there. The Open Meetings Law was established in 1959. It sort of follows the philosophy that um, sunlight acts as disinfectant. The more you open things up to be seen by everyone, the safer everyone feels about what's happening and there is less chance to do something that's illegal. You know, so that's the general concept of the, you're smiling at me like you've never heard that. I can remember that. that. Oh, no, I've never heard that. Like sunshine access. This is a fact. I'm definitely going to remember that. Yeah. So that's the whole purpose of open meetings. Um, every town um, committee meeting um, should have an agenda and be posted just in case anyone wants to know what's happening. It's a little different um, for some of the committees. I mean, planning commission will always give the recommendation to the town board. I think that committee's probably looked at with a little more, a little more scrutiny than others. Um, but technically, my advice is every town created committee is subject to having an open meeting and having an agenda just in case someone wants to show up and add input. Um, I put a notice in on the website and I post it. Yes, I do. There are no minutes because I was told all I have to do is provide the, um, the, the grant application itself. Well, and that kind of ties into closed sessions. Yeah. So there will be minutes created at any town board meeting, any town created committee meeting um, that would be approved and would be available for inspection if anyone wants to see them. The exception is with, is with closed meetings. Um, and there's only a handful uh, maybe two handfuls of exceptions, and those are listed in 19.85. The most. Or in your book. Right. You can go into the book and it'll list them out and give an explanation as to why those can be considered closed meetings. The reason why I printed that off for you is because the statutes are annotated and there are case blurbs. Uh, about litigation that happened over someone challenging this particular statute. So sometimes that uh, it, it's interesting reading um, for me anyway. Um, Thank you. But it'll tell you, you know, sometimes how a court interpreted what the, the statute means in terms of can it be open, can it be closed. Um, generally, Personnel issues will be closed. Contract negotiations are closed. Um, I mean, giving legal opinions or advice to the board. This one right here. Yep. Personnel. Are closed. Um, those are the most common ones around here. Um, they don't happen that often. If, a, if someone files, let's say someone is alleging the town was negligent, they were injured. Um, there are separate statutes they have to file. They have to file a notice of claim and a notice of injury with the town. But by statute, the board, through its town board, has X amount of days to do something about that notice. So that would be a closed door meeting. And, oh, I can think of two that maybe came out of the municipal court arena in the last two years and then a former employee so yeah. we've had uh more closed meetings probably in the last year and a half two years 
Um, Three. He's back out at the board. <laughs> okay. So when, when you do a closed I mean, door meeting, yeah, the, the public's post, not open to it. Right, but does that eventually come out to the public on what we've decided? Yes. At the end of a closed session, a motion is made to go back into open session. And then any decision that was made in closed session will have to be made in open session. So the door will open. Anyone that's still out there at the end of the closed session can come in. And during the open session, um, it's generally noticed as um, board action on any matters decided in closed session. And, and no action takes place, you say no action took place. Where is it? Right. Yeah. But we do have to say, like, what the decision was. Yes. In the yeah. motion. Yeah. Yep. So those aren't recorded. Um, the closed part is just recorded. Correct. The open. When you go when back, you go open, back and open, the open is recorded. Why don't? Why aren't? Isn't that something you want to go well, back there could to, be or like, not, or you don't want to go back to? So I mean, say I mess up totally, and you have to have a closed session about me. Okay. So it's me personal. That's not open to the public. No, but the but, recording I'm saying to so, go view to go back and view. No, no it's no. not recorded. It's not audio recorded. It's not visually recorded. It's not recorded at all. I will be in the closed session taking minutes, but then basically it'll be like discussion took place regarding a pending claim from Joe Schmo. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. But, <laughs> You know, discussion took place regarding pending claim by so and so. All right, that's all that would be shown. I mean, any details would not be open to the public or given to the public. And that's one thing you have to remember too. We have a closed session about something. You can't go tell your neighbor. You can't go tell your boss. You can't go tell your wife, your husband, or your nothing. dog. Nobody. Or your dog. <laughs> you know, you can't. You, what happens in closed session stays in closed session. Okay. It's not for the public. And that's the only time. The statute says when when you have to read the statute to take a roll call vote to go into closed session, the statute indicates that such discussion, if it were made public, could have an adverse effect on the reputation or person who the Sorry. conversation is about. So right. it and, says that in the statute. And if I'm providing uh, legal advice to the board, um, that's attorney client privilege information. And if it were open to the public, nothing is confidential. Okay. Well, I think Ty's point is like just like for not for public, not for public. but I'm for like, like if there was some doubt out. and you went back, like, oh, when we talked about that, was this the reason we decided or that I think that's like your point, just right? You need to pay, but pay attention. Right. <laughs> well, that's hard for me sometimes. <laughs> right. Now, I'm going to suggest you brought up a good point. I don't know if there is a separate exception in the public records law that once yeah, here's how we're going to get around it. You can take notes at your closed session meeting if you want to. I will then classify them as your personal notes from that meeting. And then those don't have to be shared when a public record request comes in and someone says, I want Michelle's records from that closed session meeting. We can deny that request. They can try to, you know, appeal our decision by going to the circuit court, but. One example that I've had in training about is say that your municipality wants to buy a piece of property to build a park. Okay, so you know it's on the market for $80,000, but you wanna see if you can get it lower. You're gonna say, you know, in your closed session, you're gonna discuss like, okay, we're willing to offer 75, but you're not, or, you know, whatever you can to try to get that property, but you're not going to say in closed session, well, we'll go up to 75,000 because then the seller's going to go, well, then I want the full 75,000. Yeah, 
five thousand. Yeah, okay. So it's that kind of details that you have to keep like down low to so nobody knows. So chap um, statute nineteen point eighty five lists the reasons why you can go into yeah. closed session. And that's why if the book is so handy because it's all spelled out right. and easier to read than that is that good reading for you too? Uh, the, that book, that manual is is great. It really, it really is. is. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it I doesn't like give you. I see that. Yeah. It, it doesn't is. give you a lot of the uh, case law summaries um, that help me in giving you guys the advice. But in terms of what is or is not allowed, great resource. Um, next. Forums. Um, so this came up recently. Um, when I say recent, I want to say it was last year. I was looking for the memo I did to the town board, and then I ran out of time about even there being negative quorums. So with a five-person board, generally you would think the quorum is three, and no more than two board members at a time could be speaking on a town issue because um, those two alone don't have enough votes to decide a vote at a town board meeting. Well, there was discussion last year, and I think this came through the Towns Association somehow. I don't know how I, I came across it. They were discussing negative quorums, and they said even with a board of five, if one person is absent or abstains, those two board members could create a voting block based on whatever discussion they were having about a town issue. So, is it realistic that no board members are going to chat about town business if they run into each other? Probably not. But my legal advice to the board is bring it to the board meeting and the discussion has to be held in public in front of everybody. So that's really all you need to know about quorums other than with emails too. Um, be careful not to be emailing with another board member about issues that are coming before the town um, because even two you email Joe, uh, that could be considered a negative quorum. Now it's gonna be fact specific. Um, I had not really even heard of that term until last year when I wrote to the board about, hey, you guys know there's something called negative quorums too? Um, but bottom line is keep your discussion for the uh, so board meeting. So if, if you're, I guess would it be caught in a negative quorum? Mm -hmm. What could that do? The action of the town board would be found could be found to be illegal from the citizens or from like from like, like whoever, but, found but, whoever, whoever yeah. found out about it. Yeah. Okay. So let's say the board um, using a violation of the rules regarding quorums. Let's say we'll use that snowmobile um, amendment that got passed. If it were to be found out that there was an illegal meeting where three of the board members met to all say, we're going to vote yes when this comes up at the town board meeting. If that's found out that there was an illegal meeting, for one, that board action is null and void, and two, if anyone were damaged, that probably wasn't the best idea, but let's say um, with the road bids, that would be a better example. Uh, a quorum met outside of open session, so it was an illegal closed meeting. They all decided we're going to award this contractor the town contract. If that's later found to have been an illegal meeting, so it nullifies that vote. Um, let's say, you know, if they were the low bidder and the next lowest bidder's bid was 
$50,000 higher, well, you just uh, cost the town $50,000. Right. You know, so sure. okay. that's why you shouldn't do that. Gotcha. Well, I think, and then probably like, what, what if we run into each other at Quick Trip? And we're like, oh, did you get this meeting minute, or did you understand this, or something like that? You're saying that could be an issue, like. Um, he's just advising that we don't. But you're saying right. that specific, right? People right. 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 speak right. in generalities mm -hmm. and pleasantries with each other when you see each other in public. But if you know something is coming up, or um, will be on the agenda. Whole discussion on those issues until we're here. This um, is the I have a question. That is the so, safest. so if you're going to put something on the agenda and you CC everyone and at the end do not respond to avoid a quorum, that's what you should you, do. You can do that. Yes. Okay. I just yeah. wanted because I saw that you did that on one of them, and I just wanted to know if yep. you can do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Or like when I send out that agenda email, everybody responds back to me. They don't reply all. The reply all was to put them to, you know, on the legal meeting. Yeah. yeah. And if you follow newspapers, then I don't know if you read newspapers anymore, but Joe does. He reads his phone. I do. <laughs> yeah, I do on my phone during more meetings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every year, somebody somewhere in the state says this is exactly what Jim said. Some hot topic in some town or village somewhere it occurs, and then boom. You three guys were at this meeting. Here's here's the witnesses. You know, it's at a cocktail a, party. Yeah, it could be anywhere. Yeah. It could be an attraction, but they were talking about it. Okay, yeah. it's highly embarrassing. Okay, number one, and number two, you should know better. I mean, everybody should know better. But thing is, sometimes that's why we have meetings like this. You don't know, right. and in here, you know, what you can do, what you can't do. But you see it. You see it every year, somewhere, village of Belgium or. How many eaten? And it's like, what did you do? You know, and it just it's just it's embarrassing because it's like they know better, and when they get interviewed, they say, "Yeah, we knew that." They just did the, you know, whatever what they had, you know. But it could cost money. Yeah. But it really cost the reputation. Yeah, and it would cost. You know, it could create claims against the town, and then the town's insurance goes up the next year because. So many claims were filed. I mean, it just has kind of a snowball effect. So just try to avoid, avoid that. And um, I think maybe it's a good idea, other than saying just do not respond, um, that Kim maybe say um, don't hit reply all. Well, I have the notice at the bottom yeah. of my Okay. Yeah. She has the standard footer up there. Yep. Okay. That's another thing maybe we should talk about sometimes is having standard footers on our emails, you know. Um, yeah. with That's that good. statement, you know. Yeah. Uh, do we have an uh, a moderator for Outlook? When I say a moderator, like a person that puts like on our calendars like no. hey, we have a meeting nope. here. No, nope. you get so at the meeting in your packet, there's a whole list of meetings. So that's for you to put in your own phone then, that's for And the town calendar is on, on, yeah. online too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, or you have like an old soul like myself who <laughs> has this and lives by it. Yeah. Yeah. Do so, we have to email what we want on the agenda or can we type something up and You need to email bring it to or you. email it. You can type it up if you want to. Um, so it doesn't call. call. You can call me with it. I mean, someone talks really fast and they have to write really fast this ordinance to blah, 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 many blah, blah, section, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, slow down. <laughs> right. <laughs> when you need the items for the agenda before I can forward you the actual draft because yeah. maybe I haven't done them yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I call Kim usually when she um, sends so out like a draft. Means. And I, like I said, I usually try to do it the Monday or Tuesday before the next Monday meeting. So, um, the last thing I want to uh, cover is public records. Um, now that you are government officials, anything that is memorialized 
It's technically a record that is subject to disclosure. Other than personal notes and anything that is not related to the town at all. I mean, you can still, I mean, you don't have to worry about saving emails when they have nothing to do with the town at all. Um, the, and this just came out this month, uh, it was last updated about five years ago. This was one of the email attachments I sent to you guys today. Uh, a May 2024 um, open meetings law compliance book, but there is. Um, yeah, keep, yeah. Well, uh, the office to keep, sorry. Yeah, so actually, this is open meetings, but I also gave you a PDF file regarding public records. And this seminar deals specifically with governmental public records. Um, so, again, I'm not going to read through it, but uh, this is a great resource. I would keep the public records, compliance guide, open meetings, compliance guide, with your town's association book. And that'll pretty much cover anything you need to know. Uh, you can always call me as well yeah. with questions. And I will say as a side note, whenever, because you guys, have you gotten the first pound association magazine? It's like a blue and gray magazine in the mail. I don't think I've got. It's been a little while since I've had. So, because they come out every month. So one should be coming like. June just came out this week. And I haven't oh, I gotten my like paper yet. copy yet, so it'll be in a couple days. But in that, they'll have like workshops. They'll have some of them are Zoom, some of them you could go to. But the Towns Association workshops are the best. I mean, in all the training I've had, they're the best because they're directed specifically to towns and they're real easy to follow. They have great speakers. It's all do, done through the UW Extension Office. So they, they're just really good. So in a, in, a, in a closed session meeting, you won't, we won't have any packets to leave here with. Like nope. papers no. or nothing. Everything stays here other than what we write down for our personal. Yep. Right. So, okay. Yep. Uh, when a public records request is received, um, certainly I encourage you to contact me at that point if you get one individually. Sometimes records will go to each board member for their, uh, for their records. Um, like they'll want all your emails or something. Right. Between want like all your emails between you and John or something like that you know so we don't delete any emails no no those are kept okay so I, mean, right. email. I almost went through and deleted some today other than the one what about these quarantine ones that keep getting oh, I, mean, I know there's some you know, I, I delete mean, those I've been yeah. deleting those is that yeah. okay the state bank of Nigeria wants you a billion dollars. You can delete the quarantine ones because yeah. those have already. They keep yeah. the, the outlook we have now takes out that junk stuff, you know, like, dear darling, I'm going to give you $18 million. Yeah, I was scared of all the yeah. stuff like that. I'm yeah, like, yeah. so they quarantine it so you can delete that. Okay. But I'm you should sure. say, you know, maybe build up some folders on or something. But say emails from Jim, emails from Joe K. You okay. know, just kind of do that kind of thing. Or you know what goes to my quarantine? My um, Facebook or notifications from the town. Oh. Oh, they all go to quarantine. You know, when I get a notification from the town. Yeah. Oh, then you have to you better like, talk unblock to Jim that. that. There yeah. should be some way to unblock that. Yeah. Right. Ask Joe, he probably knows how to do Yeah, he probably did. <laughs> at least each one. Right, so anything that comes from me, Anything that comes from the board, the clerk, the chairman, even if you get an email from a town resident saying, hey, I want you to put this on the agenda. Right. It's town related. Yep. You have to okay. keep it. Don't yeah. delete it. Okay. Well, speaking of that kind of stuff from residents, we can't solve every neighbor problem. I mean, people will, they expect us to fix the neighbor problem. Like, their bush in their backyard is on my property. That is not a town problem. Right. If that bush is in the town road right away, then Todd will go out and look at it. But a lot of times we get these calls like, my neighbor's tree is hanging over my garage. That's not our problem. It's not. 
you know, maybe just work it out with your neighbor. It's a civil issue. It's not a town. If it's hanging over the road. Yes. Because the town would, has a responsibility to keep, right. you know, the right, right of way is clear. But you're just, the neighbor's dog is in my yard. Well, then you need to call the police department and complain about a dog at large, you know, but it's the town. There's only so much we can do. Right. We can't babysit the entire town. 